What is up guys, McDouble's back again with a brand new video and today we're going to be doing the best tank builds of 2021 and what we're going to be doing is showing you what you should be starting off with, what you should build towards, and what legendary random enchants to use. So I hope you guys enjoy this new and returning player guide. Let's jump right in. Okay guys, I'm going to be giving you guys 8 different unique tank builds in this video that you can play right now in Project Ascension and be viable with. I'm going to list them on the screen now, and if you'd like to skip ahead to go to the tank build that you want to see about, timestamps will be on the screen and in the description below. The 8 builds are as follows, the Bear Tank, also known as the Plague Bearer. The 2H tank, also known as the Parry tank. The Crimson Warrior, which is a take on a Paladin tank. The Mountain King, which is your nature damage tank. The Fire tank, which uh, Craig's pretty good with. Yeah, I did some videos on that myself. That's going to use things like Flame Strike and Blaze Ward. A regular prop Paladin, which will still work if you just want to, you know, go from TBC or Wrath straight into Ascension. Know what you want. Don't want to go for the whole Crimson Champion route. There's still some options. The Bulwark, which is your prop warrior with a twist and the frost dk that's what i call it the mock frost dk route or the frost tank which works very similarly to the fire tank so again if you want to skip to any of the timestamps to see the tank that you want to learn about you can do that now but let's go ahead and start off with the plague bearer so the plague bearer is going to require you to want to start with both bear form and growl and uh, you're going to want to prioritize swipe as a form of aoe threat lucky for you all of these are incredibly easy to get nothing that you need as a bear is going to require an epic card it's all going to be rare and below some very good abilities you might want to consider carding would be things like Lacerate uh, or even Mangle. And lucky for you, the Plague Bearer is one of the tanks where they offer you skill cards in the starter zone that you can see on the screen now uh, for that spec. So you can basically guarantee certain abilities that you want. With this build, you're essentially going to play in the Feral Druid Tree, taking Feral Tank Talents, and they really do just speak for themselves. Prioritizing agility as your main stat and getting a lot of dodge primarily. It's quite good. You'll have very high armor in bear form. You're going to be using the legendary random enchant known as Plague Bearer, which is where the whole build gets its name and it's the whole point, right? But you have an alternative if you don't want a disease spreading playstyle, which is going with a build called Nature's Fervor. It's a little bit more offensive, I would say, uh, than the Plague Bearer counterpart, but it does have some defensive capabilities if you picked up Fairy Fire, as it will allow Fairy Fire to reduce the damage you take by 10% on use, which which is pretty permanent and very very good but if you just go with plague bear it gives you a new ability called festering strike and it focuses around using festering strike to spread diseases on your targets and then swipe into those diseases there's a lot of numbers i have a video on it i can also put in the description below and i would say it's a pretty fun spec a little weak early on but as you get gear you will become literally incredible. <laughs> All right, another one. I've done videos on this one, the two-handed parry tank. Now with this one, you want to start with defensive stance, thunderclap, and obviously a two-handed weapon. This is non-negotiable. You need the thunderclap, you need the defensive stance. Now I didn't start with a taunt, so I would say that you, you don't have to, right? You're okay. You will roll into it, okay? You will. You have to be very unlucky not to roll into the taunts, but thunderclap is actually enough at low levels to hold threats. Now, ideally, you would guarantee things like revenge as that's a very good thing to have for aoe threats and between revenge and thunderclap you're pretty much good but if you get things like consecration that can be nice as well getting the crackling thunder epic enchant is pretty great for any thunderclap build because it builds extra threat and so i do highly recommend it as well with the 2h tank build your main single target threat is going to be devastate which just applies thunder if you don't have devastate i would try having the thunder armor and that's what my guy had it just helps you guarantee that the boss will basically never Never drop off you and it works all the way into heroics right but you can play a 2h tank at a regular level in all forms of pve content and be perfectly fine and honestly it's one of my favorite ones only beaten by another that we'll talk about a little later on now the legendary random chance you want to use for this build are blade master which gives you a build essentially centered around devastate building up that parry percentage and getting off certain effects on your 2h parry tank abilities that are empowered but you can also go with something called undaunted if you pick up the last stand this makes you a little bit more like a monk tank in the case that you will be utilizing the stagger mechanic that monks had where you take damage over time rather than taking it all as one big giant 
hit. So the whole entire build is entirely centered around keeping last stand up as much as you can and stagger. So if that's something that interests you, if you enjoy monk tanking, Undaunted is the way to go. And of course, you'll be stacking a lot of parry. All right, the next one I want to talk about, the Crimson Warrior or, you know, the revamped Pally build. You're going to want to start with Righteous Fury and or Defensive Stance and Thunderclap. Once again, I recommend Crackling Thunder if you go the Thunderclap route. Hand of Reckoning is obviously quite good as a taunt as it does holy damage. It's quite good in general, but especially good for you because everything you do is holy based. Now your AoE threat is going to be things like Avenger Shield, Consecration, and Shield Slam. You can also use things like Devastate. Specifically, you're going to want something like Hammer of the Righteous. And overall, it just plays like a... TBC Pally. Spamming all your abilities on cooldown. Most of them already hit more than one target. Bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. Now, the next one is a really cool one, but it's very hard to do. It's the Mountain King or the Nature Tank. You're going to want to start with Righteous Fury and Defensive Stance and Thunderclap with Lightning Shield if possible, because Thunderclap and Lightning Shield are quintessential. Now, you're going to want a card. This is very card required, I think, unless you get lucky. Uh, the Concussive Blow and the Chain Lightning, unless you want to just go for the common roll on Chain Lightning. But I recommend just carding it, getting it out of the way, unless you want, again, Prestige multiple times. Risk getting unlucky. Now, with the Mountain King spec, Concussive Blow turns into a new ability called Storm Hammer. What Storm Hammer is essentially going to do is make it to where your Chain Lightning will build a ridiculous amount of threat. That's your AoE, coupled with Thunderclap and the Crackling Thunder epic re now if you couple that with the epic enchant that allows lightning shield to stun your targets as well as still doing damage to targets when you get hit you've got a pretty self-serving build that seems to do everything you'd want it to do now you're still going to go with a shield and a 1h with this build and so you will build very similar to a warrior build you'll just include some talents you can play around with it but you'll basically never lose threat and it's a really really fun build to play now for the legendary random enchants, again, it gets its name, the Mountain King, from the ability it gets. It's also the name of its legendary random enchant, Storm Hammer. It's absolutely required. A good epic you might want to pick up, and I highly recommend you do, unless you believe that you're geared enough to where this won't matter, is the Natural Disaster Epic RE, which gives your lightning spells, or your nature spells, I should say, 25% increased threats. This is especially good if you have to skip out on either the Righteous Fury or the Defensive Stance, if for some reason you decide to try it without the thunderclap which i highly don't recommend but ideally you'd have all of them okay my favorite the fire tank is next what you're going to want to start with is what craig started with right i started with defensive stance righteous fury thunderclap because thunderclap is just too damn good and i also started with the fire blast now you're going to want to card things like ideally the fire ward believe it or not and i wouldn't say you actually have to worry too much about any of your fire spells as they're all common and you will get them offered you eventually however i would recommend carding things like dragon's breath and blast wave both would be ideal now if you have both of these you'll be able to utilize a talent that craig used called fire starter this makes it to where when you use these abilities your next flame strike will be instant cast and cost no mana this is your aoe couple this with thunderclap and crackling thunder possibly consecration like i rolled and you have a ridiculous amount of aoe damage and you're just blowing stuff up now another really good ability you can get with this build would be the living bomb because as things die it'll blow up doing even more damage generating even more threat and you can just living bomb everything now what you're going to want to use with this build personally you could go one of two ways you could skip the whole fire blast thing and just go harbinger of flame this makes it where your abilities will do extra fire damage and if you're using let's say the fearing fire epic random enchant to increase your fire threats and or just righteous fury harbinger of flame will give you extra threat or if you take the fire blast route you can go battle mage which is what i did giving your warrior abilities like thunderclap like things like revenge if you roll that and i do have recommend and picking it if you do a chance to proc fire blast giving you more threat but again if you get that fire ward you get the dancing flames epic random enchant which says when you use fire ward which lets you absorb fire damage that can already be useful your next flame strike is instant so you can proc that flame strike on demand it's massive threat it's massive aoe damage 
you're just blowing things up. Your single target threat plays very much the same way as a regular warrior with Sunder stacking. You're gonna wanna use a sword and shield. You're gonna want things like shield block, obviously, just defensive cooldowns. You're a tank, remember that at the end of the day. But your AoE rotation is just going to be absolutely bonkers. Very similar to the Mountain King, Lots of these builds have the same single target rotations I've noticed. It's just Devastate or Sunder Armor, simple stuff. And these are just things that I know work, right? Go ahead and theorycraft for yourself and find your own niche. But that's what I think is great about the tank. If you're not min-maxing going for the 1%, you can really do whatever you want. All of this stuff works, even a fire tank. Now, you also have the option to just play a more simple or more Paladin Warcraft 3-esque type of prot pal. You're going to want Righteous Fury seal of righteousness and judgment you're going to go full sp you're going to want consecration for sure and hammer of the righteous as well as things like pious strike and holy nova as a result pious strikes makes it to where hammer of the righteous is going to holy nova at the same time which gives you that holy nova effect and that's healing and doing even more damage so you have massive healing just self-healing with this build. You have massive AoE as well. It's all holy. Things like Holy Wrath and Hand of Reckoning for your taunt can be quite good. Since you took the Judgment, you can even go into the talent that gives you extra mana and gives the Replenish effect to your team when you use Judgment. It's just good. Now, some could say you could just do this and play a Crimson Champion build, and you could, but you can also do it completely different by going with Consecrated Strikes. It says when you use Hammer of the Righteous, you'll proc a Consecration. It'll give everybody a 5% Strength buff. It'll buff you even more. And you'll do extra damage with your auto. But you could also Righteous Zealot if you get the Smite, which will proc a Smite that scales with your Smite, right? And also heals for a little bit as well when you use any kind of damaging ability. It's very Holy Heavy. It's basically your Spell Power, Mana, Sword, and Shield tank that Pallies kind of wish they were and I think it's really cool and really fun. Now we also have the Bulwark. This is as close to regular, regular prot war as you're going to get. You're going to want Defensive Stance and Thunderclap, and you're going to want Taunt. Other very essential abilities are things like Revenge. Again, it's all physical, all rage. Now what pulls this build together is you're using a Sword and Shield, you're using things like Shield Block, of course, but you're going to want Bulwark. And that's where the shield block becomes essential. Bulwark is going to summon an absolutely massive shield in front of you that's going to negate a ridiculous amount of damage by ridiculously increasing your block chance. It actually has a badass animation as well, and I'm actually going to be trying this sometime soon. Now, the last spec that you could play is, again, a lot like the fire tank in that you can make anything work. It has some support, but at the end of the day, outside of, let's say, an AoE rotation and some extra animations here or there, for the most part, you're just playing a warrior, but it's the Mock Frost DK. Now, you can play this either 2H tank based or sword and shield based. It doesn't matter. Even for the fire tank, it technically doesn't matter because you're not using any shield based abilities it's just you know what do you want to do do you want to be block based or do you want to be parry based now again if you're min maxing super hardcore one of them is obviously going to be better than the other but it doesn't really matter if all you're thinking to do is up to like say mythic dungeons or like light raiding it really won't ever matter unless the people around you are unsavory that's my point what you're going to want to do with the mock frost dk is start with frost bolt and defensive stance and hopefully the thunderclap obviously as well but you're also going to want things like frost brand weapon and frost shock getting as much frost damage as you can keep in mind the frost shock builds extra threat so it's not like there's no synergy and you'll want to taunt. Now, your AoE threat will be Thunderclap and Crackling Thunder, as well as Cone of Cold, which I highly recommend you card, unless you want to risk just going for it. Your single target threat will consist of things like the Devastate or the Sunder Armor, Frost Bolt procs from Maelstrom Weapon, which gives your auto attacks and abilities a chance to give you a stack of Maelstrom, and upon reaching 5, you get a free instant Frost Bolt. And you're going to want the Deep Freeze, which will do extra damage to bosses, because they're permanently immune to stuns, and all that extra damage will build you threat. The reason all of this will build you extra threat, not just because you'll be using defensive stance and possibly even the Righteous Fury, which I highly recommend you pick up as well if you can, but the Ice Warden Epic Random Enchant will give you 25% increased threat, 
with your Frost spells. Now for a legendary random enchant, I recommend Frost Lich, which gives your damaging abilities a chance to do extra frost damage, or if you really want to play something fun, uh, and but also very slow and might not always go off, could be bad, could be sicko mode, it depends if it procs, uh, overloaded frost storm. After enough frost casts, so this won't take you uh, any short amount of time, but after enough frost casts, uh, you proc a crazy storm around you that does a massive amount of frost damage. This one's not likely to go off very often, but again, if you want to have some fun, I mostly just recommend you take frost lich, as there is no defining uh, legendary random enchant for frost, but it still works. And I've definitely got to be trying this one sometime soon as well. So, okay, guys, those are the eight regular best tanks that you can play on Project Ascension right now. What you want to start with, how you want to play it, generally speaking, and what legendary enchants and in some cases epic enchants that would be essential for you that you want to go for. If you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you make a tank, make sure to give this video a like and to comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Big doubles out. <laughs>